Happy Wednesday. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Hey, Eleanor, you want to hear a joke? Sure. How do snowmen travel around? I don't know. By icicles. How do they can give an affirmation to Trayden? Because you were, when I was in kindergarten, he was a good friend of mine. And I, he, when I was eating help, he would let me play with him. Thank you, Trayden. Hey, everybody, it's Mr. Johnson coming to you live. Man, it's been a long time, but I'm coming to talk to you about some books. I'm talking about some books that I've read recently. I'll give you a couple of them, um, and then I'm going to talk about a graphic novel that's uh, that I have available and a graphic novel that's coming soon. So let's get started. First things first. Oh my gosh, this book. I read this one. Funny book. Great book. Second book in a series. It's called Egg Marks the Spot. It's by Amy Timberlake, and it is the second in the Skunk and Badger series. If, if you were one of those kids that you, you uh, when you were in first grade, um, your teachers read Frog and Toad, cute, sh cute stories, cute stories, but kind of old. This is sort of like a newish sort of version, a little bit more grown up version than that, but it's probably perfect for like second and third grade readers. And if you're a second grade teacher, man, this is a great book to use as a read aloud. Egg Marks the Spot by Amy Timberlake. I'll just kind of give you a rundown about what it's about, but it says, buried in the heart of every animal is a secret treasure. For rock scientist Badger, it's his spider Ayagate he found as a cub, stolen years ago by his crafty cousin Fisher. For Badger's roommate Skunk, his treasure is Sundays with the New York Times book review. That sounds like something that Mrs. Schaefer would like. When an old acquaintance, Mr. G. Hedgehog, announces his plan to come for the book review as soon as it thumps on the doorstep, Skunk decides that an adventure will solve Badger's problem as well as his own. Surprisingly, Badger agrees. Together, they set off on an agate-finding expedition at Badger's favorite spot on Endless Lake. But all is not as it seems at campsite number five. Fisher appears. That's right, Fisher, the cousin who stole Badger's special rock when he was a child, appears unexpectedly. And then a chicken arrives, because Skunk likes chickens, and seems intent on staying. Something is up indeed. Secrets, betrayals, lies, and a luminous late Jurassic prize. It's actually, this is a really funny book. And they go rock hunting together. Really cool stuff. Really great message about being friends and going on adventures and meeting new people and exposing yourself to new things. Awesome book, Egg Marks the Spot by Amy Timberlake. That is in the is the second in the Skunk and Badger stories. Now listen, if you're like one of those people like, I don't want to start reading the second book. I want to read the first one. Good news, because I have the first Skunk and Badger book too, which was an award winner. They're available if you want to check either one out. And that could be if you're a child or a teacher person. All right. New book, The Beatrice Prophecy by Kate DiCamillo. Yes, that Kate DiCamillo. You know her. She's written tons and tons and tons of books, right? Um, so a two-time Newbery Medal Award winner. This is her newest write, uh, and it is an interesting one, too. So I, I enjoyed it, but uh, let me give you a rundown on the inside cover. I'll kind of give you the little synopsis of the summary. Oh, by the way, my, my copy is actually signed by the, by the illustrator, So who is Sophie Blackhall. Anyway, here we go. Uh, there is one creature that the monks of the Chronicles of Sorrowing fear above all others. It is Answelica the goat. That's right. They're afraid of a goat. The monks fear her sharp teeth and her hard head and her wily ways. And so imagine Brother Edict. He's, he's one of the monks, one of the main characters. He's got a wobbly eye. Very interesting guy. Anyway, anyway. so imagine Brother Edict's terror when he goes to feed Answelica, the goat, one morning and finds a child in the pen with this scary demon goat. The child doesn't know where she came from. So the girl in the pen doesn't know where she came from. She doesn't know who her people are. And she remembers only one thing, her name, Beatrice. The king's men, however, know who she is. And they are searching for her. And that's a part of the big mystery in this particular book. It's like, 
Why are the kings after her? What's going on? And they keep panning back and forth to what's happening with Beatrice and with some of the other characters. And King D. Camillo does that in some of her books, too. So this was a really good story. I really enjoyed it. If this is something you want to give a chance to, uh, teach your people or even kids probably age, uh, probably like a fourth through fifth grade would probably be really good with this one. If, you got, if you're like one of those super third grade readers, like, I like a challenge. This could be good for you, too. So if you like books that are based on, like, say, medieval times with, like, castles and knights and things, this might be a book that you might be interested in. So that is The Beatrice Prophecy by Kate D. Camillo. Now, then, of course, we've got the latest in the Bad Guys series, Bad Guys book number 14. This one is available. You, you know the series. You know all about it. It's super awesome. Real quick read on the back. Pop quiz, you're on the roof of a skyscraper and every floor of that building has nasty things that you just don't like. And you really need to get to the basement. So what do you do? And no, you can't join the B team and fly away in their glamorous new spaceship. So think quick, Chico, because the multiverse is getting worse. Yeah, that'll just kind of give you an idea of, if you've read any of these books, the flavor of it is awesome. Aaron Blaby, The Bad Guys, number 14 in their B, actual B-E-E, -E, Hind You. So, there you go. So that was available if you want to check that out. And this next book, I only have this really cool piece of paper to look at because it's not even out yet. It is coming soon. And I'm sure that, that, that the wonderful Mrs. DeCup can actually put the cover of the book like in this space. Coming soon. High Low Number 8. Yes, that's right. High low number eight. The main character, of course, in this one is Gina, just like in high low number seven. It's called Gina and the Big Secret. Your favorite characters are back and on an epic quest to save the world in this newest book in the New York Times bestselling graphic novel series that kids and critics love. And so do I, actually. I, I, I've read every single one of these. There's a new earth. A new one? What happened to the old one? Anyway, the world's timeline has been turned upside down. Ah! And now magical creatures are everywhere, everywhere. Gina has to fix things and fast. With DJ and Hilo's help, can Gina find the key to turn the world back to what it was? Does she want to? Find out in Hilo 8, a laugh out loud, action packed adventure filled with epic battles, true friendship, good jokes, bad jokes, giant hilarious monsters, spoiled royals, prophecies, good, evil, and much, much more. And always good, good like bathroom jokes. They always make good potty jokes in this book. They're hilarious. I love them. So if you are interested in this one, check, keep an eye on the big board. And find out when it comes in because it's due February 22nd. Be the first one to check it out. All right. I'll be getting back with you again in about another week with some more reviews on some books that I've read and some new coming soon books. You guys stay well and keep reading. Be nice to your classmates.